when I was little, my favorite movie was Beauty and the Beast. And there's a scene where Gaston rips open his shirt. And I used to replay that so many times on the VHS that it wore out. <laughs> but I learned the word homosexual when I was in church in fourth grade. And my minister was talking about these people who were evil and sinners and would never enter the kingdom of God. It slowly dawned on me that he was talking about me. And I spent the next few years just trying every night, praying to make being gay go away. I didn't want to be it. I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want my family or my friends or my school to hate me. But it never, it never did. And when I was a freshman in high school, I decided I was going to tell my best friend. So I went to McDonald's where I worked and I wrote it on the back of a receipt that I was gay and I slid it across the table to him. He looked at it, looked up at me, tore up the piece of paper and walked out. The next day he went to the principal's office at school and said that he didn't want to have classes with me anymore, that I was going to taint him in some way. And he told everyone in school, and their parents started to come in and say they didn't want me to go to school with their kids anymore, that I was, you know, the same thing as a pedophile or a murderer. So my principal called me into school, into the office, and he told me that either I told my parents about it that night, or he would tell them the next day. So I went home, and I told my parents, and there was a lot of crying, and a lot of screaming. And it really, really, really sucked. I went from having friends and being at the cool kid lunch table to sitting by myself. They didn't want me to have PE with the guys anymore because they were worried that I was gonna check them out in the room. I used to get my car keyed a lot. People would write faggot in it. And I would carry spray paint so that I could cover it up before I went home and my parents wouldn't see. They would beat me up, you know, during recess or football practice. And I'm a big guy, so it took a few of them. I drove out to an empty field in the Nebraska countryside. It was sunset, and there's no be more beautiful time in Nebraska than when the sun starts to slip over the horizon, and it looks like a watercolor painting. And I just remember telling myself how much I was going to miss it. So I took the revolver, and I remember it tasting like cold metal. I pulled the trigger. There was one empty round in the gun. And it was the one that I pulled. A few seconds later, I got a phone call from my closest gay friend who lived an hour away. And he told me that if I ever wanted to belong, if I ever wanted to feel like I could be happy and who I was, then I had to leave. This was a year after Massachusetts legalized gay marriage. I said, okay, that seems like a good place. What's a, what's a big city in Massachusetts? I came to Boston on August 25th of 2008. My parents didn't come with me. I said goodbye to them at the Omaha airport, a few hours east of where we lived. I carried with me one suitcase that had everything I needed in it, all my clothing, and a fan because I heard it was hot here. It took me three hours to find BU my very first day because I had no idea how to use the subway system. If you would have told me four years ago, or six years ago when I came out, that I would be living the life that I am today, that I would be as happy as I am today, that I would have friends and people who love me, and I go to this awesome school where people really care about me. I would have never believed it. So to anyone watching this anywhere, it does get better. It gets, it gets awesome. <laughs> in fact, and just hang in there. Because everything that sucks today will make you stronger tomorrow. And if you can survive it, if you choose to survive it, then you will never, ever, ever regret it.